live small, Michael and Valerie here. Today we will look back to the places we lived so far. So we take some distance by drawing them down and putting them next to each other. We know that we already lived in small spaces, but each time in another period in our lives. When it's a temporary accommodation, it's a quite natural solution to live small without making any adjustments to the room itself. After a while we discover it's a lifestyle that match with who we are. It became a conscious choice and we don't see the point of upscaling to a house. I lived in a small room in an apartment with my family. This room was my main living space. To work I had to put my stuff from my desk to my bed. And to go to sleep I had to put all my stuff on my desk. My bed and desk were too connected. I had a little studio built in the attic with my own kitchen. Every corner was a separate room, none of them was the most dominant. To go to the bathroom though, I had to go four stories down. When I went to the university, I moved in a student house in an even smaller room. I used the city and the common spaces in the house to escape the smallness of my room. I had a little bit more comfort, because I had a love bed. In this room, I liked to have my desk under my bed, because the temptation of sleeping instead of working was non-existent, and once I was out of bed, I stayed out. Here I was living for a few months in another country. In this room, I arrived with a single luggage bag, and I left with a single luggage bag. It was an experience that helped me drastically in downsizing. A recurrent thing I do is, although I live small, I dissociate the dining table with the desk. Something Valerie clearly never does. Okay, here it was really temporary. It was an attic with very slanted walls. It forced us to live more on the floor because there was so little place where we could stand comfortably. The floor became a heavily used living area. For months I lived in a hotel room for my work. My luggage became my home. Because I changed rooms every week, I discovered that finding your own stuff where you left them is an important part of feeling at home. Here I had for the first time a, a huge room for my standards. I had a lot of empty space, but actually I had less useful space. The big furniture, like the bed and the sofa, were very dominant, and the rest became passageway. By living in this studio, I was convinced that we would be able to live small forever. In one room, there was everything we needed. It had the essentials. The fact that there was a little difference in height between the living sleeping area and the rest was very powerful. So we bought this place. Clearly, these 28 square meters were equipped to accommodate renting bachelors. Yes, all functions were here, but a lot of the space was lost in passageway and the dominance of the bed. We loved the place, but didn't see us living here next to each other for years. Currently, we are redesigning the place, removing jogs in the walls, placing the bed on a platform and trying to blend all furniture and functions into one. Stay tuned for insights, tools and discoveries. Subscribe to this channel and leave a comment or tip in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.